Hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on a couple of wooden motor cruisers in and around Victoria, British Columbia. Along with the loving memory of my pup Jordy. All the while fixing up for some pretty ambitious cruising. If that's the sort of thing that you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. Quite a nice boat for a plastic boat, but anyway, it did also involve a couple of flights in this little plane. Fun way to spend the day. Anyway, let's get back to work on home. And uh, this week I'm going to carry on with bright work, which is not so interesting. But I'm also going to be able to put all new mahogany on the uh, aft bulkhead in the cockpit, and I think that'll really look nice by the time that gets done. All right, let me get home. Frankly, have dinner and go to bed, and start bright early tomorrow. And welcome back to the shed and MV poem. Well, we're going to carry on on the exterior of the boat this week for reasons that I won't go into. And we're going to get going on these bulkheads. I have something really quite nice planned for that. And um, some of you may sort of suspect having been watching the show for a while. Before we get started, though, I do want to talk about the stain work that I did last week and the uh, obvious blotchiness especially on the decks. Well, really only on the decks. The cabin sides turned out really quite well. And yes, that blotchiness is definitely present. I could have sanded much, much harder, got down further, and then gone to some trouble with oxalic acid and other sorts of things um, to try and um, reduce that blotchiness. I could have then used a filler, um, a pre-stained filler, um, all of which was way more work than I was really interested in and I really didn't want to take off any more wood than I had to. I am going to make an effort to um, further even out some of this with some more stain work and in fact some, some other techniques I'll get into later. The truth is it doesn't bother me. It's what the boat has and although it might be able to be made um, nicer, uh, to me, this is nice. Uh, so I apologize for those who would like to see this as a pristine varnish job, which it certainly will not be. Anyway, let's jump along uh, to what we think we can get done over here. First step is to prepare the bulkhead. Uh, it's actually in pretty fair shape, considering it's Douglas fir or perhaps, probably Douglas fir, um, and was never uh, intended to be the exterior. These, this, um, very thin uh, V-joint is really just the structure of the bulkhead because they didn't use plywood in 1937. Um, okay, so we've got to begin with by uh, cutting off these huge um, screws or possibly lag screws that are coming through from the inside and pulling out a bunch of little nails and just tidying it up and making sure it's nice and flat for um, the vertical V-joint we're going to put on here. It'll look almost identical to the paneling you're seeing here, except it will be brand new mahogany and uh, sealed up. So, uh, so yeah, grinder, grinder, grinder. There are a million nails in this. Nail, 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 nail. Okay, so the sole here in the aft is slightly cambered. So I'm going to use this piece of nasty bamboo to create a datum line for me that I can work from to measure the little side pieces that will go at the bottom underneath the uh, the V-joint here. I, I, I think you can tell what I'm up to here. I just, just, just keep on with it. Now I can mark this horizontal line. And I have a datum now to uh, scribe out the blocks that will go down on the bottom here.
30 degrees. Okay, so I'm gonna make a second line up from the first tier, which will give me something I can work from to do the scribe. Now if I take my piece, which of course won't fit yet, but at least I can line it up with the upper line. And now I can do a pretty rough scribe. Uh, let's see if that's about right. Right about, right about there. It's gotta go to the left as well, but we'll be pretty close with this. Set the blade nice and low and off we go. I've also trimmed a little bit out of the bevel here so that it can sit under there. And now that it sort of fits in place, we can uh, scribe this um, uh, plank here, which is on an angle inwards because of the tumble home on the boat. So I'm just gonna scribe that against here and we'll go cut that. If you're using a plane, even a small plane like this, on a concave or, like in other words, inside curve, well, it's not gonna cut very well because the blade is gonna be in the air because only the tips are riding. Well, you can lower the blade, yes, but then that gets a little ragged and uncontrollable. What you can do is turn the plane quite a lot. And what that does is vastly shorten the foot, shoe, whatever the length of it. Um, not only that, you get a uh, angled slicing, which is often preferable when planing anyway. There we go. And let's see. Beauty. The scribe to the bottom is excellent. Now what I need to do is ease this edge here a little bit so we don't have this unhappy little relationship here. Okay then, so final install, I've got two little quarter inch blocks here that it's going to sit up on. And the reason for that is I'm going to take a uh, trick from the construction industry um, and this quarter inch gap is going to get a back rod, which is basically just a round piece of foam, think a teeny tiny pull noodle, uh, which will be stuffed in there. And then um, some sealant in here, uh, caulking so to speak. Now the reason for the back rod is it makes sure that the sealant isn't super deep. You don't want to seal a joint deeper than it is wide. Um, and that's because if it's going to flex at all, if it's too deep, it'll be too strong and it'll rip off one of the surfaces. Anyway, I've talked about this before. We don't need to go on about it. I'm also leaving a 3 16 gap here uh, to lay some sealant in there. Oh, okay. Now you'll also notice I didn't put any sort of sealant between the deck and the bulkhead in that sort of gnarly corner. Well, that's because I never sealed the same joint in two places. Um, I'm going to seal it all along the outside surface uh, between the, the V joint and then this board and then a sealant here to the deck. And that is my line of protection. Uh, because if water was to get behind that, I want it to be able to evaporate through and onto the inside of the boat. Never seal the same place in two different lines. And it's after five, time for my very favorite job. Um, you've all seen this. This is the new um, helm wheel uh, for poem. I hardly say new because it's ancient and I really love it. Okay, so it's chain drive, so it'll go chain to cable to a quadrant, which is the way the boat was already, although it had a different actual helm. Now, there's a couple of problems with this. The first is that the shaft and um, 
bushing that's in here, which isn't much, uh, are pretty sloppy against each other. So that needs to be dealt with one way or another. The other thing I want to do is I want to move the sprocket as close to the uh, mount as possible. The reason for that is so that when I'm driving, I'm less likely to bash my knuckles on the chain. I am actually going to put a thin brass uh, chain guard over that at some point, but you know, that's who knows when that is. So um, there is currently a wood spacer in here that I won't need anymore. The trick is how do I, anyway, let me take it apart and you'll see what I mean. Isn't that a beautiful nut? That's a crazy nut. Anyway, so there's this wood spacer on here and you can see that the shaft has been worn away where the steel, <laughs> whatever you want to call the spacer, I guess, has been riding on it. And of course, steel on brass is death. Now, uh, I mean, this may actually be bronze, but I have a feeling it's brass. But anyway, who knows? Um, the point is, if I can move um, the rotating member, in other words, this spacer uh, inboard like this, then suddenly I have a true um, uh, spacing again. In other words, it's not sloppy because it's not riding on that mess. Now, I can't just move it in because I want to extend it. And I really don't want to have this steel um, spacer anyway. Plus, I'd actually like to go with a smaller sprocket to change the geometry. Now, as far as I can tell, uh, it's held on to the bronze wheel. There's no possible indication of any fasteners here with these three pins. What these are, I do not know. They're not bolts. I imagine they are simply pins that have been uh, peened over. In other words, turned into a rivet uh, on the inside of the sprocket to hold everything together. So those pins probably go all the way through into the uh, cast bronze. Now I'm praying these are threaded at the other end and they're threaded into threaded bosses in here. But you can see there's not much depth to play with there. So I really don't know what I'm dealing with here. Uh, but I got to take it apart. I got to do it soon because if I can't do it myself, I've got to take it to a machine shop and have them do something and that will take time. So for now, I'm going to drill off um, the uh, riveted ends of these pins and hope I can get to a point where I can slide all this off and see how it's anyway. I hope this isn't the beginning of a sad story. I'm going to start with a small drill. Move up to a larger drill. There we go. Now, <laughs> am I going to be as lucky getting the steel spacer off? What the heck? This is not coming apart as I expected it would. Okay, so that's not so bad. They're basically pins that lock it in both directions. Okay, that's reasonable. That can be recreated. Now, just to be fair to whoever made this, there actually is a yellow metal, in other words, brass or bronze uh, sleeve in here. So it wasn't uh, steel against uh, brass or bronze, but nonetheless, it was still pretty hard on it. Yes, sir, every once in a while, <laughs> poor old Land Rovers will bust the splines on the inside of the drive flange. And uh, let me show you what happens. Yeah, so the quick solution is to weld the drive shaft to the flange, uh, which happily I just had done here in Duncan at DSS Welding. Uh, they were fantastic. I just dropped in, they had a look at it, they laughed a little and said, okay. All right, now I gotta order some parts. Here we have a very big and very lovely piece of 3 8 Sapir mahogany. Too big for this shed. Um, <laughs> I hate to cut this up, but this is going to be cut up into all the little V-groove uh, strips that are going to make up the bulkhead. And it seems like a lot of wood, but there's just barely enough here to do it. So I mustn't make one cutting mistake. And I, I do now and then do that. Because of the curve of the cabin top, I'm, I've calculated that I can actually start a little longer and shorter and work my way down and maximize the use of the wood. Wish me luck on that.
And in the blink of an eye, I have turned one beautiful big piece of Sapelli mahogany into 16 beautiful little pieces of Sapelli mahogany. Next, set the blade over at 45 degrees. And a lovely little 30 degree miter on the bottom. to match the 30 degree on the top of the board. Let me show you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Now these are going to be fastened with bung screws. And as a result, I want to um, pre-drill them uh, so that I don't have to do them in place. And um, that'll make life a lot easier. And another thing that needs to be pointed out, it might be tempting uh, to attach these at least temporarily with my little 23 gauge stainless steel pins um, The only problem with that uh, of course those pins will be driven under the surface and they'll look great at first until the next poor fellow comes along and wants to refinish this and Sanding off a little bit of this they'll expose the uh, the tips of all those tiny little stainless steel pins and you'll have little shiny dots I'll, uh, Can't do that so I've calculated where the screws are going to go. Um, I'm going to pre drill for the two bottom rows. The top row will actually follow the curve of the uh, cabin top. So I won't do those in advance. So let's just get the first two going, which is going to be at nine. And now all the counter bores, boring, 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 boring. And I've sorted all my pieces into their various sizes and it's time to get to work. I've already cut as well two little 3 16 strips. Uh, one I will use as a spacer between the planks uh, vertically and one I will use against the uh, existing uh, block, plinth block here at the bottom to create a space. Both of these voids are to be able to pump sealant in at a later time. So this is pretty straightforward, really. It's uh, just got to use them in the right order. Just there we go. That'll go on there. That'll hold that in the meantime. This will go right here and sit against there nicely. Sit against there nicely. Yeah. Again, I'm only going to put two in for now uh, in case something goes terribly wrong and I have to undo it. Okay, so far so good. Got one in. Do I dare say this is going well? No, no, don't rock the boat, Peter. Don't rock the boat. And the last one is going to need to be ripped a little bit and I'll split the difference. And well, that did result in a bit of a blunder with the pre-drilled counterbores. It's not too bad because after all, they'll probably be completely covered with sealant there. And this lower one will be covered with a block, but still, I'm not proud of that. I just realized there's four rows of screws. I could have pre-drilled the third. Anyway, no harm, it's held in place, that's all that matters. Okay, so you can imagine what we have to do next. Okay, then you can see I could have gone one of two ways here. I either could have cut a big block of wood um, to optimize the angle, put a little curve on the top and the bottom and be done with it. But I wanted the grain to be horizontal. So I've actually used a much taller piece of wood because it'll be more wasteful. Uh, but I think in the long run, it'll be worth the effort. So let me just get this in the right place. I've already accounted for the reveal and using my beautiful new compass. I'll just scribe a nice line on there. I'm gonna save this part for later. 
And how'd we do? Well, that is good enough for me. All right, excellent. Now just the bottom cut. Remember this? Instant template. Good to me, it's gonna go there, we're gonna go straight about there. Perfect, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay, now we gotta cut a uh, dado or a, a rabbit in the back of this to sit over these panels. So I'm just gonna mark very gently here. There we go. And I use the fine saw to cut these uh, just above that. Boy, I only just made it here, eh? But anyway, that'll be fine. Well, I rather successfully turned the camera on when I meant to turn it off, and off when I meant to turn it on. Well, anyway, here's the result. Okay, and now to come up with a nice uh, fastening pattern. How about, uh, I don't know, about that much in from the top and the bottom. Two, two, and what's left? 21, 10 and a half. Let's try and do this sort of square. Okay, now a whole lot of screws. Well, I am super pleased with the way this has turned out. Um, it's still a lot of work yet to do. Before I can oil this, and you can be sure I would love to, I have to do all the sealing um, and then resanding and cleaning and prepping. And it, there's quite a lot left to do. And I'm not gonna get around to that this week, mainly because I don't have the sealant. Oops. Um, but uh, on the whole, it's gone really, really well, and it's going to look like a million bucks when it's done. All right, folks, you've just got to see this uh, massive, massive fish boat work uh, by good old shipwright Scott. How are you, mate? Good. How are you? Peter? How's it been? Pretty good. Oh, lean in, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. Now, I've been checking in on this boat for a little while, and it used to have gaping holes in the side, and we're going to show you some of that. So, Scott, tell us what's going on here. Well, we hauled March 15th and proceeded to very very gently poke our way into some of the seams around the ice sheeting right and found that there were none left <laughs> so basically from here forward we put in 24 new steam bent white oak frames into the down all the way to the concrete really fortuitous we got beautiful amazing pile of wood 21 I see yeah, foot yeah. two by 12 air dried crystal clear old growth red cedar right. lots of steam bending in this big turn here this plank <laughs> it's crazy what it does here under the stern doesn't it it just twists real hard yeah all these three these three in here with a a lot of fun getting those in. You know, we've thrown 2,000 screws in this boat. Unbelievable, and and so much caulking. You've been pounding that mallet. Yeah, for, yeah never done that much caulking before. So yeah, it's been a yeah. lot of fun, and it's been a huge learning process. Yeah. There's a physicality there. There's yeah. a there's a body memory. Yeah, just getting after what needs to be done and putting it back together to make it happy again. I'm, I'm just so thrilled that yet another Woody is being looked after by a young fellow that just loves doing it. So that's, that's what I, I love about it. What's that? I'm not sure how young I am anymore, Peter. <laughs> You're young! <laughs> Carry on, mate. Yeah. 
Okay, hey, welcome to the Tropical Geordie Beer of the Week, coming to you this week from the fabulous uh, Dressler Shipyard. Yeah. Can we call it that? Sure. Having just had that great tour, I really appreciate you showing me around. That's cool. Yeah. Really, really cool. Massive, massive job on this boat. Really awesome. While we're at it, Skip. let me introduce you to Skip. Absolutely uh, fine young shipwright, um, Skip Jensen. Uh, he's been working with Scott on this. I've just only met him in the last couple months, I guess, really. Yeah, and uh, yeah. uh, also has a very interesting boat. What are you, what are you living on? So, yep. Somewhat similar to your boat, yeah. an old monk as well. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Very good. Okay, we've done introductions. We'll get into that some more because we have to open beers. Yeah, yeah please. These, uh, Fat Tug. Did I jump the Drift, you didn't, Scott. You were just so enthusiastic. Um, and did. Skip's uh, joining us with I'm, something else. Having a soda. Too. Exactly. Um, Fat Tug is actually Can't my favorite beer in all of the world. Uh, I guess Guinness is a close second. Cheers. Mm. Absolutely fantastic. Done on the show before, but <sighs> worthwhile, especially because these were gifted from a um, uh, fine fellow, Neil Groskov, who came down to Thanks, see Neil. me. At, but thank you, Neil. Anyway, cool. So we've had a look around at the boat. Yes. And it's been great. It's been just amazing. I've been, am I allowed to see where we are? Yeah, by God. Absolutely. Okay, we're at Maple Bay Marina, which is on the way to Genoa Bay Marina. So every time I come down to um, work on poem, I can check in on these guys. It's been great. In fact, there may have been a couple of pub lunches in amongst all this too. <laughs> it's not actually, nearly enough. Yeah, exactly. So uh, this has been a really big job, right? I mean, huge, pretty massive job. And like, pro biggest thing you've taken on before? Or, um, you've done some not, big stuff not the, well. not the biggest boat I've worked yeah, on, yeah. but definitely the most extensive. Most extensive, yeah. Uh, wood yeah. Replacement exactly. Project. And you have like wood boat experience from way back. Like you've been yeah. up and down the coast. Your family was what were you saying? Yeah, my, my dad's been playing with wooden boats yeah. for a long time. And a long so time. I, I grew up messing with old boats like this. I actually grew up on one very similar. Very to similar. Boat, so this is kind of like a, a bit of a return to my youth. Coming back like around. This. Yeah. Exactly. So that's, that's just awesome. I actually love boat work like this. I couldn't have a boat like this. I mean, it's just way too much stuff, but the work is magnificent to watch. I think maybe as you saw, we ran around the stern there, just fantastic shape to it. Anyway, it's Lots been great. Steam. Lots of steam. Lots, Lots of steam. steam. Yes. Anyway, well, great gentlemen. Um, fantastic to have been introduced to you both. And uh, all we need now is a word of the, no, we don't. You know what we got to do? We move so fast. Do you remember that name that I looked up? What was that name? On the boat. No, no, the name I PL. looked up the P. Oh, yes, you have a winner to announce. Somebody's got right, a t-shirt. Right, exactly. Yeah. Last week's winner. I got so excited chatting with these guys. Mm -hmm. uh, last week's winner of a Travels Jordy t-shirt is PL. 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 Uh, congratulations, P or PL or whatever you are. Get a hold of me and we'll make sure you get your shirt. Speaking of winning a shirt, now we have to figure out how we win this week's shirt. You going to help with that? Yes. Well, the boat's name is Diligence, so let's use that as, the, as our That's word. That's too perfect. Beautiful word. Just perfect. Okay, well, the uh, Travels Majority word of the week will be diligence, which happens to also be uh, the name of the boat and probably has something to do with the effort put into oh, saving. We hope. We hope, exactly. Excellent. Diligence, you know what to do with it. Cheers. See you next week.